Jeff and I married in 1994. In 95, limited schedule, he had a limited schedule, kept knocking on James Finch's door, just, you know, give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance. Well, mid-2005, I was really just sponsor hunting, didn't have a great deal. Um, you know, I was 30, and I knew I wanted kids, and so I had Tanner in 96. And, yeah, is that right? God, I just got confused. Yeah, 94 is when Jeff and I got married. Mm -hmm. And then 2005 when I was struggling. So uh, pregnant with Tanner, Mark Reno calls me. Getting ready to oh. go to Daytona testing. All right? So he's like, hey, we're putting Purvis in the Cup Series. And we're going to take our ARCA car. And thought maybe you might want to come test for us and see if you want to run the ARCA race at Daytona. Mm. I didn't say anything. I hung up the phone and said, let me call you back. I went and bought five pregnancy tests. Cause I you said, better, but yeah, you want to be sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> five more. And I'm like, and, and you know, it was, day, it was early. You just find out you could have done it. Nobody would have known, but there was just, so I called him back and I'm like, all right, listen, you know how bad I want this, but you know, it's just been a year since I've really had a lucrative deal and I'm going to have a baby. And I just, can't do it. It was dead silence. Well, hell, that's the first excuse I've ever heard <laughs> from a driver. <laughs> I'm like, ah, but here's what happened. So I had Tanner in 96 and Samantha in 97. And in 99, I drove for Dame, James Finch in the Bob Evans car and finished second at Daytona under caution. And I'm telling you what, Mark Reno was, you know, going into it. He's like, mm, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see how she does. We'll see how yeah, she does. Yeah, that's a tough crowd. And I'm telling you what, if I had a green flag finish, I would have won or crashed. There's no question. I know that. Who won? And, uh, uh, what's his name? Bob, Bobby. Oh, Bob, it Bob wasn't Gearhart. Frank Kimmel. It was Bob, Bob. Gearhart. Yeah, Bobby Gearhart. Yeah. yeah, Bobby Gearhart won. And uh, But coming from that is when Michael Cranifus approached me. And at the time, he was uh, Pinsky Cranifus with Jeremy Mayfield. Oh, that's right. And... Uh, I got a ride full season with Cranifus in Arca Series. So that's what came from that Bob Evans race. Dang. That is a story. So, yeah. It is a story. Good and, group. you know, people said, and this is the, you know, the female side of it that you don't hear a lot, but there was, there was some criticism of how can you do that? Like, how can you go get in a race car when you have two little kids? Like, well, the kids came to the track with me. My mother-in-law came to help. I, and at this point, I had like a... a, a motor coach or RV to where it was not like, a, but it, it was kind of like, I mean, I don't, I want to teach my children to don't ever give up on your, your goals. If I was a mountain climber, if I was succeeding at, at climbing a mountain or, or being an Olympian in some way, because I had children didn't mean I was going to stop doing that. I kind of wanted them to learn that part. And Jeff was in racing too. So it was just kind of a, a thing, but there were some people that were like, how can you do that? But from within? I mean, from uh, industry? Uh, not or? really. No, it was probably more, uh, not necessarily fans, because I've always had a really good fan base. But yeah, a little bit within. Oh. A little bit within. Like maybe some moms from the, you know. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Maybe, you know. But it's something you got to decide to do. And, and I felt more comfortable doing that than driving on the interstate. So. Yeah, they, it, they didn't know your speeding ticket history. Yeah, they thought you're exactly. way safer in a race car. Exactly. So it <laughs> it was something to where you kind of, you know, dealt with some stuff. But at the same time, I, I felt positive. Jeff supported me. And the kids were great. And they are great. And yeah. the reason I got out of it in 2005 is because I didn't feel like I was in safe equipment in a good situation. And... I, it wasn't worth it. If I wasn't out there, I wasn't a start and park and I was never going to be a start and park. And I walked away from the Vassarette car and uh, Jeff Green got in it. They were going to Talladega. And I had said to the sponsor, I, I don't, I just don't feel like it's safe. Well, he ended up getting, the roof flaps were rigged and they literally parked that car for, you know, like in front of inspection, he didn't get to run the race because it was when they just started with roof flaps. It was mm -hmm. like 2004, 2005, yeah. 2005, and uh, no, four maybe. 
and I, I didn't feel bad about that. I'm like, I don't, if I'm not going to do it right or be in a, a good thing, I'm not, I'm, I'm ready to walk away then. And, you know, my kids were in sports and I didn't feel like I was, I wasn't ready to really say I'm quitting. Quit was never a word, but it was kind of like, I'm not doing it that way. Mm -hmm. So if there was another chance, maybe I would have, timing would have been perfect because 2005, 2006, 2007, things totally changed. So there was no social media when I raced. I mean, look at it now. Look at Haley Deegan and how she she definitely, well, so many drivers, uh, yeah. William Byron, they're all really good on the keeping their fans and talking, and we never had that. Yeah. So it's a different world. Who said, you can't ever say, what if, what if, what if. I don't, I don't regret it. I kind of had to visually close the garage door uh and then i felt like well i can open another one so that's when i started decorating and i think you hired me to do whiskey river yeah sure oh no i did here yeah i did this i did kelly's i did yours yeah. so so there's me up on a yeah. scaffolding painting squares but i had it comes from my mom my dad was a racer my mom was kind of the antique artist artsy so i got a little bit of them both so yeah hey a person that can have two passions in their life it's a pretty lucky person. So you um, you mentioned Mike Wallace. Um, there was you sat on a pole in the Bush car in Atlanta, and I mean this is right as soon as you got into the Bush series. Yes, uh, ninety four. Which is, I think a lot of I remember when that happened. I think a lot of people were like, "That's impressive," you know. And you were probably thrilled to be able to go out there and show people that you had that kind of speed, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so what happens in the race? So um, we were, you know, the whole key for me was just drive smart, hold your position best you can, but be smart. And so we go into turn one, and Joe Nemechek was on my outside. I was on the inside. Carried my way pretty much through one, and Wallace came in between us and hit me. I went out. Nemechek went out. And it was just like heartbreak, you know, that's, and that's all I was thinking of at that time is just, it's like, you know, you have a chance and then it's gone and before the first lap and you know how many people had bets on that. Oh, she'll crash before mm -hmm. that. I don't remember if it was turn one. I think it was turn three. So we got through one really well going into three and that's when it happened. But here's what happened is after, you know, I'm just heartbroken and just like, you just want to redo. And then... Kyle Petty was uh, commentating, and he came up to me and he said, I just want to let you know, uh, I just got done interviewing Nemechek, and he is hot as hell because Mike Wallace told him he's taking you out on lap one. Well, what happened is he took Nemechek out too. So that's why Joe was like, that was, that's the story, and yeah. I'm not going to say that's just what Kyle Petty told me. And then, you know, then the, the microphone's in your face and you're just, I'm just like heartbroken. You just want another chance, but wow. too bad that something like that had to happen and we didn't really get to see where we were. Because yeah. my goal was to finish that race up front. My, obviously, your goal is to win, but at that point, you're, you're young and this is a big deal and you got the media. You don't, I would rather not have any media until i winning races. Sure. Then you want the media. But it was a lot of pressure, but I, I don't I don't think I screwed up, but there was a lot of pressure. Yeah. There was a lot of media. There was a, a lot, lot of people talking about you coming in a series, being a female, mm -hmm. and then you go out there and sit on a pole. I mean that amplified all of that noise. Yes. You know, and so we standing on you know, standing on on pit road before you climb into your car. I mean, you you I imagine you're feeling tons of pressure. Oh yeah, but it goes when you get in the car. Disappear. It goes away. Isn't that great? Yes, it is. <laughs> then that's exactly what it felt like. And I felt like uh, the girl that was doing my marketing had come up to me and um, she grabbed my hand like right before I put the window net up and she's like, I feel your dad. I just felt him like come through me. He's here. And my dad had passed away in 93. So I lost him in the midst of before he could ever see that Polaroid trailer oh, with man. my name on the side. Wow. And so she's like, I feel you. But I'm telling you, it's, it's all that stuff and the cameras and all that. You're focused when you get in yeah. there. And then it's like, and then later when I went into the Cup Series, um, it's like I had to really learn, like, when you get in that car to pull through that garage, you have blinders on. You don't care who's 
looking at you, what they're thinking, who thinks what. Just go and do the best you can do. And it was always easier when you had the helmet on than yeah. out. So the way you're telling the story, it gives me a sense that there was – that while you were having your kids, your driving career was – was on hold but it was kind of pretty sporadic up in that point anyways yes. and so this this breakthrough run with finch finch uh reignited yes interest in your career right so you go run the full time in the arca series yes how does that go oh um back to that time to where you feel like when you pull in and you unload your your factor and you gain respect I did that in the ARCA series. Didn't win. Came close. Um, did, I think, third in points, third in points, uh, rookie of the year, most popular driver, all that stuff, but didn't didn't have a win. Bro- had the pole at Michigan. Penske had brought Ryan Newman for his first ARCA race. And we were in practice blew a motor. So Michael goes over to Penske's. And to Ryan's, like, we need to borrow your backup motor because that you could do that then. So put the backup motor in. I qualified on the pole. Ryan qualified second. Oh, <laughs> with his motor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with his motor. So uh, great, great story there. Uh, Mid point of the race, I think I was running third, fourth, blue right front tire, hit the wall, broke my ribs, broke my shoulder, flew mm-hmm. off in a plane. Next thing you know, you're in the emergency room, and they think you have collapsed lungs and all that stuff. But I, I had broken shoulder, broken ribs, got in the car at Pocono and started the race, but Michael made me get out. I didn't want to get out. Because when you're hurt, you're not hurt when you're in there. It hurts to get in, yeah. and it hurts to get out. Oh, yeah. But Once you're buckled once, in, it's yeah. kind of like I'll hold you. It's all holding you in yeah. place. And I met um, – Michael had called, I think he said maybe you or Bobby Labonte – had broken a shoulder, and this guy named Al Shuford, who was a trainer for the Panthers, Michael called yeah. me up, and he's like, I'd just gotten home. It was a, from the uh, crash in Michigan, so it was like Monday or Tuesday. And he's like, you need somebody to get you in the car, and you need to drive there, and you need to go. He's going to do physical therapy with you. And this guy was like super like, I'm at Panthers Stadium in their training room. And he's like, I had wrapped, you know, all the ribs wrapped, and he's like, when you grip a steering wheel, I'm going to have you turn in it left by the time you leave here. Mm. And they put me in that wave pool, ah, yeah, I did taped that. stuff up, yep. worked on the shoulder, worked on the ribs, and I drove Pocono. And that's how I met Al Shuford, who he was the one who said, you need to be absolutely not concerned about what people are saying, what people think. When you drive through the garage area, you have a right to be there. And that was going into cup because it wasn't really my plan. It was my plan with Michael. And we ran, my first cup race was Michigan. And I finished the first 500 mile race. I think, I don't remember where, but I know I finished. All right, guys, I know a little bit about cars. So believe me when I tell you that tire pros, they're the real deal. They've got great people, great service, and they can take care of all your automotive maintenance needs. Plus they're a sponsor of this show. So, you know, they got great taste in podcasts. So check out Tire Pros. Follow them on Facebook and tell them that I sent you.